Welcome y'all to Whiplash TV. Thanks for coming back to check out another video here on the channel. Today I'm still on the NNBS Chevy Silverado LTZ with the 6.2 V8 engine in it, 4x4, all that good stuff. Hopefully y'all have been checking out the previous four videos that I've already done on this build. Don't worry, I'll work on getting some more footage of some of my other rides. But you know how it is. I mean, when you get a brand new vehicle, you just kind of can't help yourself and you just kind of get to modding it and, you know, diving into it. So I've already done several things to help out with the looks of the truck, get some of the grandpa look off of it, even though it still would kind of be a sleeper truck. And most people would think this is probably just a 5.3 V8 and run up on it and might get a little surprised because it runs pretty good. But today I'm going to hop inside and we're going to do some interior stuff. Today we're going to work on this sound system. So the factory Bose stereo is a pretty good system. And I probably will be upgrading the speakers at a later point in time. I also wouldn't mind upgrading the subwoofer that is inside the center console. But today we're going to start off with the head unit. So... We're going to change out this setup and put in a double din. Now I've looked all over on YouTube at different videos for installing double dins in these trucks. And I have yet to find one that is really, really good on taking you step by step as to what you need to do to put in a double din and have it playing music and working right then and there in the video and not be skipping steps and doing different things so my goal today is to make this install of this doubled in so easy that you're going to watch this video and you'll be inspired to do it on your truck and do it successfully so please somewhere along the video if you find it helpful and useful hit that thumbs up on the video drop me a comment down below hit the subscribe button and ring that notifications bell if you haven't already that way you get notified every time that I post a new video. All right, we're gonna hop right into it. So we're gonna start by opening up my package that I got from Crutchfield, and I'm gonna show you everything that's inside of it. So I went with the Kenwood huh? DMX 809S. This head unit might look familiar because it's the same one that I put in my Chevy Tahoe. We'll get into the details on it here in a moment. This is the Metra dash kit. For those wanting to know the part number is 95-3305. This is the Datalink Maestro RR. This is one of the interfaces needed for dealing with the Bose stereo and then also dealing with the controls on the steering wheel. This is the Datalink Maestro HR gm5 harness this harness is used to help make it plug and play we also have the data link maestro ken 2 this is for kenwood and jvc radios of course you always need your antenna adapter this is the access integrate uh, cable this usb cable will be used so that we can continue to have a usb input right underneath the armrest in the center console. All right, so this is everything that we need for today. We have the Kenwood doubled in head unit. We have the Datalink Maestro interface box, the Datalink Maestro installation harness, Datalink Maestro Ken 2 to interface with the Kenwood unit, the adapter cable to continue to make the USB under the armrest functional, the dash kit and the antenna adapter. So the first thing we're going to hop into and talk about is the Kenwood head unit. Inside the Kenwood head unit box, we are going to find multiple things such as this here, which does the GPS. This is going to be the harness that connects to the Kenwood stereo. Some of these we're not going to have to use because we're going to have the Datalink Maestro harness. But this is what comes inside the box. It comes with a microphone for your hands-free calling. It comes with a trim bezel. Of course, instructions, screws, and hardware. 
It comes with our parking brake cable. So a few of the reasons why I picked the Kenwood was because it has a really nice large doubled in display. It has touch buttons over here on the side. They don't raise up from the screen so it gives a nice flat look. But you have several buttons for your home, power on, power off, voice controls, menu, and then also your volume right down here. The other very good part of this system is that it is a shallow chassis. This is going to help big time when it comes to installing this into the dash. The deep double dins don't do well on these new new bias style dashes because they only have so much room. Another thing that I really like about this unit is that the parking brake wire right here on the back of it is very easy to bypass. I've shown you all how to do this bypass before, but I'm going to again state that I am not saying that the driver should be messing with the radio while driving, and you should only mess with the radio while parked. So that's my disclaimer, but I will show you how to bypass this. All right, so to break down this adapter right here a little bit for you, that comes in the Datalink Maestro Ken 2. This connector right here will go into the head unit right here. So then off of that, we have this connector, which will go to our other harness. And coming from this connector is where we get our reverse and get our parking brake. So if we were to connect our parking brake right here to this, then that right there is going to give us our parking brake signal because it's coming from right here and will come from the interface that's going to talk to the truck. So that makes it super easy if you don't want to bypass your parking brake. Also your reverse right here off the back of the radio will get connected right here to the reverse that is coming off of this adapter which is going towards the radio plug. So I'm going to take this harness and snap it right into the back of the radio. Now that that is installed, we're going to connect our reverse wire right here. And then now we have our connection made for our reverse. Next up, I'm going to take our parking brake wire that came in with the radio. And I'm going to hook this up to this parking brake connection right here. I could cut right here and go ahead and put on my connector and chassis ground it. I'm just going to do this so that I don't cut this wire that comes right off the radio. And I leave that connector on there in case if I ever want to use it. Next up, I'm going to cut this wire back in here. Once your connector is crimped on, make sure it's good and tight. On the Kenwood, all we have to do is chassis ground this parking brake wire. So I'm going to remove this screw right here on the back of the chassis. Then we'll put the screw through the connector and put it back onto the back of the radio. And that's all that it takes. Our parking brake has now been bypassed. All right, next up, we're going to open the Datalink Maestro RR interface. Let's take a look at what's inside here. Okay, so here is the Datalink Maestro interface. There's a lot of different ports on it where you can plug in and connect different things. It also comes with some wiring here that we'll have to take a look at. It's a small little cable right here with two four prong ends on it. Also on the back of the radio it says right here data link. And so that right there will get a plug in from the uh, data link harness or box somehow. So according to this you have to hook up the Datalink Maestro to your laptop 
and then also do some web programming on there. I'll get out the laptop and plug it in and see what we have to do. It comes with a USB cable that we are going to use to hook up the Datalink Maestro box to our laptop or desktop computer. So now I'm going to take the iDatalink Maestro RR and the supplied USB cable and I'm going to plug it into my laptop. So I've also got in my browser, I put this link right here, which is www.idatalinkmaestro.com forward slash plugin. And it says you have to install the web link desktop application. So we're going to work on that next. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and go to this website. So I'm going to download the Windows version. Alright, it's downloaded, so I'm going to open this file. Alright, so now the web link desktop has been installed. I go up here to main menu. Alright, so now you're going to have to sign up and you're going to have to create a web link account. So I'm going to do that and then I'll get right back with you. Okay, so now I have made my new account and my iDatalink Maestro is still installed. So I'm going to go down here to Flash Maestro. Alright, so the device is detected and I'm going to flash by vehicle. So I'm going to select my vehicle, which is a 2012 Chevrolet. Silverado 1500 without factory navigation. So now you have to select your steering wheel, which style you have, and I do have the telephone icons, so I'm going to select that one. Then you have to select which stereo that you've purchased, and we have a Kenwood. And it even goes so far as to say which model. So we have the DMX. Okay, DMX 809S. So we'll select our model. It says, please enter the serial number of the radio being installed. This is needed for Maestro to communicate with this radio. So on the back of the Kenwood box right here, we have a serial number right here. All right, next it tells me that this is the recommended firmware. Radio replacement and steering wheel control interface solution for GM vehicles and compatible radios. Retains OnStar satellite radio in some cars and amplifiers. So I'm selecting that. This is telling me which things are also required. And I do have this one here. So we'll continue. So it says here to select all of the accessories you are using for this installation. Next up we're selecting that we have the Ken 2. Which is this one here. This is asking about a radar detector. If we have one built in, we do not. So it says here, select how you want to configure your system, vehicle info, park assist, gauges, advanced camera features, rear seat video retention. I don't have rear seat video. Satellite radio, OnStar, factory amplifier, yes it has one, steering wheel controls, and OEM camera. 
So I will hit continue. This right here is how I want to configure my buttons. You have volume, plus, volume, minus. If you hold the button, you can get it to do different things as well. So this is just a whole bunch of different things that you can get it to do based upon what you select here as well. So you can customize this system to do all sorts of different things. This is pretty neat. I did not know they could do all this and that you could select, you know, what you want it to do. Okay, all that looks good and that's how I'm going to leave it for now. That's also their default values for everything. Now it's going to let me know before I flash my Maestro. It has my product here. It has my truck here. It has my steering wheel configuration, my radio. It has my required accessories, which I have, and the optional accessory, which I have as well. And then it has all of the default setups right here for the buttons on the right side of the steering wheel and my system configuration. So now I'm going to click flash right down here. All right, that's it. It says the flash was completed with success. So now our Maestro system is done. Down here, we can select to get a install guide and here it shows an install guide right here. So I'm gonna click on this and see what it tells me for the installation. All right, so in here, this is giving you a whole wiring diagram for the vehicle. So this is showing the main harness. It's showing all the different colors of which color is which speaker and what is for what. This right here is the connection that was in the Ken 2. That one right there is gonna make this quick connect. Otherwise, this main harness would have to be cut and then you would wire each of these with this wiring diagram to the actual main connector that's on the back side of the radio. So we skip having to do all that because we have it plug and play. Right here, it is showing that you have two white connectors and it's showing a little piece right in the middle which appears to be this piece that I showed y'all. This comes in with the wiring harness. And that white, so here's our main harness piece that I just told you about that's going to be plug and play. And this right here looks to be the white that is this right here coming off of the main harness. So this has to be disconnected and this has to be plugged in between there. So we're just going to unplug that and then we're going to plug this in. Okay, so I have that plugged in just like that. So right here it shows our Datalink Maestro module. And it is showing right here that main harness, the GM5 harness. And it's showing a bunch of things that are going to get plugged into the module. So in this picture right here, we have the module just like this. Here's our USB that we just used to plug it into the computer. We've got plugins on the back side, plugins on the front side. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug these in from the GM5 harness to our Maestro RR module. All right, so we're going to take our harness, our GM5 harness. We're going to start plugging a couple things into our Data Link Maestro box. 
So first we're going to take this green one off of the harness and plug it right into the green on the Maestro. Snap it on in. Right next to the green one we have three pins. That's going to get this plug right here with the yellow, red, and black. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we've got two in the green and the black just to the right of the green. Next up on this other side, we have a big 18 pin connector right here. That is going to get this plug right here. This is all on the main part of the harness and all these little connectors are kind of on one side. So we're going to plug in the 18 pin right here. And then we're going to plug in this little 10 pin right here to the right of where we just were. All right, so just to go over it one more time, we have our iDatalink Maestro box. We have a connection in the green plug right here. That was green to green. This one's black to black. This is the three pin black, red, and yellow one right next to the green. Then on the other side, we had an 18 pin connector that plugged in right here. And then we had a 10 pin that plugged in on this side. And this now is hooked up with our GM5 harness. And we also put the white connector, we disconnected it and inserted this in the middle of it. One thing that I picked up, which was not from Crutchfield, is one of these HDMI cables, which goes from the mini HDMI port to a full-size HDMI. On the back of the head unit, the mini HDMI port is right here. So we're going to take our screwdriver and take this piece off right here. With that piece off, you can see our mini HDMI connection right back here sunk into the chassis. So now is as good a time as any to plug in our mini HDMI cable but that cable will plug in to where it sinks down and past the flushness of this chassis so then we can reinstall this metal piece which will hold in the cable So now our HDMI cable is installed and we are going from that mini HDMI to a full size HDMI. The next thing that I'm going to do just to have it done is I'm going to install my antenna adapter into this head unit's antenna connector. Alright so now that we've made it this far we'll do a little recap. We've got our head unit which has the Ken2 adapter plugged in. We got our reverse hooked up. We did our parking brake bypass right here by doing the chassis ground. We've got our HDMI cable plugged in to right here. We've got our antenna adapter plugged in already. Then we handled our IdataLink Maestro box. We already got it all set up like I showed you on the laptop. And then we have this plug, which is going to go into the Ken 2. And then we have these two other plugs, which should hook up to the truck. So just one other thing to cover, this speaker right here, which is going to do the door chimes and all that. It has a two-prong plug-in. That two-prong plug-in is going to get plugged in right here on the iDatalink Maestro interface box. But I'm going to wait to do that until after I get this installed and stuck with this 3M tape wherever it's going to go. Alright, so let's go to the truck and let's go start taking it apart and prepping it to install this head unit. So now it's time to start pulling out this radio. So we've got to remove this piece that goes around it to get the radio out. 
you're going to want to get started behind here and there's several clips in this area right here towards the inside by the controls and the radio all right so you have to be pretty gentle with it at first because it's hard to get back here because this is a little thick there goes the first clip maybe two there we go was kind of getting hung up right here on the HVAC controls now across the bottom here you want to be careful not to break this at all so now that I've got this side loose I'm going to start working on this side There we go. All right. All right, there it is. We've got it completely out. You can see there's four clips on each side, and then there's one clip at the very bottom. I'll pull it out from down here and reinstall it back onto this trim piece. That's how your trim piece is going to come off. Be careful and uh, don't crack it or break it. Next up, we're going to remove the 7 millimeter screws that are in here holding the radio and then also the HVAC controls. So we'll get those pulled out next. All right, once all of our seven millimeter screws are out, eight of them in total, then we can start taking these out. They're stacked on top of each other. So this bottom one has to come out first. And see these tabs go into these little spots right here. So this is holding in this. This is holding in on top of the radio. So next we'll pull out our radio. This is what is on the back side. So we're going to remove our antenna. We're going to remove this connector here. This connector here is the one that goes to the USB under the armrest. Then we have these two plugs to remove right here. So once all four of those come off, the factory radio comes out. On the antenna, the plastic piece comes out of the radio with it. So now with the factory radio out, the first thing that I'm going to do is hook up my new doubled in. And I'm just going to keep some of this plastic on because I'm going to be careful with it. I'm going to go ahead and hook up my wiring to make sure I have everything correct and then power it on before I go ahead and install my dash kit. So one thing that I can do that will be quick and easy is to take this access integrate cable. So this right here is the factory USB connection that goes to that port underneath the armrest. So I'm going to take our cable and clip it in. So now that that cable is installed, I'm going to hook this up to the USB on the back of the head unit. So that right there takes care of our USB connection. I'm going to take our iDatalink Maestro interface box and the wiring. Remember, I have to hook this one up to the head unit, so I'm going to do that first. So that will plug in right here. You'll notice that the wire colors coming on this plug from the harness is going to match these wire colors on the plug coming from 
the harness that is on the iDataLink Maestro box. So on this end of the harness coming off the iDataLink Maestro, these are going to get plugged into those two plugs that were going into the factory head unit. So this yellow one will go into this one and the black one it's unmistakable and cannot be messed up it'll go into this plug right here if you take a close look at these plugs you'll see on the right hand side is two larger pins that does not follow like how this one looks this one has a bunch of pins all in a row that look the exact same size so this one gets plugged into the yellow connector and then this one with the two plugs off to the side that is larger will go to the black and white connector down in here. So I'm going to hook those up. With those hooked up, you'll see our iDataLink Maestro box now is flashing red at times. Next up, I'll hook up the antenna. I'm also going to hook up our speaker for our door chimes, as I showed you before. So now that we have all of this hooked up, I'm going to try to power up the double din head unit and see what we get. As you can tell, our speaker works. So you heard the door chime. And our radio is powered up and working. So now that I know we've got it working, I'm going to test some other things out and see what else needs to be finished. Then I'll catch back up with you. Y'all, I've got everything hooked up. Everything is working. And this is just where I wanted to get to again before I do the dash kit. And I don't want to lose any of y'all on anything that's done. So I'm going to show y'all two more hookups that I had to do that were not done already on the workbench. This right here is the OBD2 port on your vehicle. So this one right here is what's gonna give us our gauges on the radio, which I'm gonna show you here shortly after this radio is in and everything is hooked up. Those gauges are super cool. You can look at your RPM, your mile per hour, your fuel level percentage, like all kinds of crazy stuff. So we'll get into that a little later, but this is where that plugs in. Right here on this wiring harness that goes to the IdataLink Maestro box, it gets plugged in in this two prong connector. These wires are kind of brownish in color and then your red and yellow is coming from your OBD2 port, that direction. I only hooked it up like this for right now, again, just to get everything working. I'm going to tuck it back behind here and run it through the dash so that way it's not seen. And then I have this right here, which is the GPS that has to be hooked up for your Apple CarPlay and stuff like that. Also for your maps and everything. So that right there, I just have setting on the dash just to make sure it worked. And that gets plugged in. That gets plugged in right here. Super easy. One port on the back of the head unit. Only place it can go. The other thing that you will have to hook up is the microphone. The microphone on the vehicle is not able to be used. Even with all these wires and hookups. So you will have to use this microphone that comes from Kenwood in with the system. So I'm going to find a spot here in the truck where I'm going to stick this to or mount it at. And then that will be handled. That is super easy to connect right here. It literally says mic. It comes right out of the back of the head unit. 
and then it just plugs in right here it's like a headphone jack super easy and then the last thing I'm gonna go over which is very important because it's how the interface talks to the head unit and this wire makes the steering wheel controls work we have this wire right here it's black and it's four pin this four pin wire is going to go right here next to this USB connection on the IdataLink Maestro interface. So four pin connector right here. And then that goes to the back of the radio right here. It in really small print says IdataLink right here. So that plugs into the back of the radio four prong can't mess it up that's all there is to it so if you follow along in the video with everything that I hooked up on the workbench and then you add the GPS the microphone for the head unit the OBD2 port two pin connector and that four pin wire from the head unit to the box you've got it you've wired the whole thing up your steering wheel controls should be working your entire head unit should be working. There shouldn't be any issues. This looks like a lot of wiring, I know. And it looks like it's all over the place. But don't worry. You can do this. So the next thing to do is going to be to start running wires like the microphone and GPS where I want to hide them at. And then also I'm going to take my HDMI cable and run it out somewhere. All right, so I just figured I'd show y'all this. For the OBD2 wiring, I just ran it up through behind here. I'll use some zip ties or something to hold it up underneath here behind the dash. And then I was literally able to just sneak it right through there. And then for the microphone and the GPS, I'm taking off this cover where the fuses are at. And... I'm going to pull off this A-pillar piece right here. This piece right here just pops out. It's just snapped in. And then up inside there is just a 7 millimeter bolt. And then after that 7 millimeter bolts out, you just pull it back. There's a clip right here that will have to pop out. And then this piece will just come out like this. And you can run wires right down through there and through into here. So that's what I'm gonna do next for the microphone and for the GPS. All right, y'all, I went ahead and I finished up these wires, running them through here. And then I took the extra wire and just kind of put a twist tie around it to make it nice and neat. So here's the GPS one. It's running through here, underneath the dash, through behind the fuse panel cover. And then up underneath here, and then I stuck it to the dash right up there. And then I ran the microphone up through here, and I put the microphone right here. So it can be aimed directly at the driver. It'll pick up real good. And then here, of course, is our OBD2 port wiring as well. So it's run through here, also tucked up nicely. Now when it comes to this HDMI cable, what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to take it, run it through the dash kit once the dash kit's installed, bring it down through this little crack right down here. There's a gap in between this console and the dash, and then just set it out right beneath here. So that way I can access it right there, but also kind of keep it hidden. So next up is the dash kit. So on the head unit, this cage is already going to be clipped in. So to take it off, you have to get like a screwdriver right back here. And then get that pulled off of there. So then this will slide forward off of the head unit. So that's how that cage comes off of there. That'll need to be done. So what you'll do for the dash kit is you'll take your left side, there's an L right there, you're going to take it, you're going to put those tabs right through there, so those tabs are sticking through, and then 
you're going to take your other side that has an R for right and you're going to stick that one right through the holes on the other side. So now this is looking at it from the front. We got both our plastic pieces in. We can look at it from the back. So you've got these tabs in and these are sticking out. These are going to be the holes where they mount up to the head unit. So with both of these in here, we can now insert our head unit. So with our head unit installed, now we will take these plastic pieces line them up to these holes so i'll show you on this right side i'm just putting a screw right in here starting it by hand make sure i get it straight and then go ahead and snug it on down remember that you're tightening up against plastic so don't go too crazy hard And there's enough screws in this Kenwood kit to do three on each side. So I'm going to do two at the bottom and one at the top. So now our dash kit is installed to the radio. It's all complete. I have everything hooked up. It made it real simple that nothing had to be run through the dash kit. So in hindsight, if y'all are watching this video, go ahead and when you bring your radio into the truck go ahead and hook everything up because you won't have to unhook anything to run it through any dash kit so now it's time to install the head unit So once all that's in there, we can now install our screws. So now we'll go ahead and tighten these down. Next up will be our HVAC controls. All right, y'all, here it is. I've got the doubled in head unit in with the dash kit, the HVAC controls, and then the other buttons and stuff down here so i highly recommend once you are at this point to go ahead and fire it up make sure everything is working before you put the trim piece on that goes around out here so that's what i'm about to do and then i'm gonna put that trim piece on next the reason why i say that is because that trim piece is really not fun to take off and you really don't want to take a chance of breaking it or snapping it that would really ruin your day when it comes to this install. So I'm going to test mine out real quick and then put that trim piece on. And I want to show you all this head unit and how it's functioning. And there it is. Looks so good, y'all. All right, so I'm going to show you all what this Kenwood looks like when it fires up. Show you all a few different things about it and some stuff it can do. And we're going to do that here in the dark. So that way you can see the screen really well without any glare. So this is the full time that it takes for this head unit to start up and then also for it to connect to Apple CarPlay. So as you can see it doesn't take really too terribly long 
I myself am never really too terribly worried about startup time. My Alpine ILX 507 and my G8, it does fire up the fastest out of everything that I own and connects to my Apple CarPlay faster than everything that I own. But the Kenwood is a great unit. But the Kenwood is a great unit, and I don't think that its uh, load up time is, you know, too astronomical or crazy. And as you see, it was wireless. I didn't have to mess with my phone or do anything. So here at the home screen, we have some different options down here along the bottom. We can change up what our options are and how many options are down here. I'll mess with that a little later on. I'm not too terribly worried about it right now. If we hit these series of buttons right here, we'll go to a full-blown menu. You can go to what's now playing, go to a camera, apps, or you can go into setup. We also have several options of things that we can do here. And one that I want to show you that's really cool is the iData Link Maestro stuff. So to get to it, you have to hit this arrow here to go to the second page, and then you go to OEM features. Under OEM features, we're going to find some extra stuff that's having to deal with the Data Link Maestro. So, if we go to gauges, this pulls up the current RPMs of the truck. It also has the load that the truck is under, the mile per hour, the percentage of fuel that's in the truck, and the intake air temperature sensor. So those are all pretty cool, but then check this out on P2. We now have a zero to 60 time. We have a quarter mile time over here on the bottom right. The tops are the same intake temp and mile per hour. And then down here you have a braking feet. So then what you can do here is let's say on this one here, I don't want my intake air temperature. So I just hold down on that then it can tell me here different stuff that I can put in there so I can put intake manifold air pressure mass airflow throttle plate position the timing advance of the truck instantaneous fuel economy exhaust gas temperature external air temperature fuel level fuel pressure boost vacuum, distance to empty, engine coolant temperature, engine load, acceleration, accelerator pedal position, average fuel economy, battery voltage, and that's the end of the list. So there is tons of different things that you can pull up there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my engine coolant temperature and then over here you have min and max so you can change right here what your amount is that is too low or too high so I'm going to set it at zero degrees and then my max I'm going to set at 280. And then we have our unit of measure, which we can do English or metric. So now if we go back, now right up here, there's our coolant temperature. I don't know about y'all, but I find that pretty cool. So I'm not going to take a lot more time on these gauges, but I definitely wanted to show those to you. Also, it's pretty cool. Under vehicle info, we have the tire pressure of all four tires. Also down here, we have battery voltage, and we can do our check engine. This right here is showing that we're in park. If I change it to reverse or drive, it shows an R or a D. If I open a door, 
It then flashes yellow on the truck, showing that one of those doors are open. So all that stuff is pretty slick. So under this one, parking assist, when you go to it, it will actually light up back here which sensors in the back are sensing like something that you're about to run into and it'll highlight it so it does it by sensor whichever sensors in the back are picking up that you're about to hit something it's going to light up all of those so now we'll go back out to the head unit and now i want to show you some of the settings under setup we'll find our audio settings display input and system so under audio you have a nice big equalizer this equalizer is both touch so you can move up and down that slider to wherever you want it at or if you prefer you can just hit these up arrows and down arrows over here on the right side to control whichever frequency you've selected so it has an awesome 13 band equalizer you have a subwoofer level you have bass extension here and then when we go under sound effects you have lots of other stuff you have your loudness you have your bass boost you have a drive equalizer you have a space enhancer you have a stage eq realizer a supreme just tons of different stuff that changes and affects the sound of the music and you can tune it to however you want it to sound we have our normal fader and balance i find this pretty cool with the kenwoods so you have the speaker and your crossovers right in here you can select in here what type of vehicle you have and then over here you select the speaker location and select the kind of speaker you have so you can put if you've got six and a half inch speakers in the front or what you what size the tweeter is you can put what size you have in the back you can put what size you have down beneath for a subwoofer and pretty cool stuff and you can tell that depending on the size of the speaker that you tell it that you have in which position it kind of alters the music to try to blend it out real nice and then of course you still have your time alignment that you can change if you want to select your listening position display you can do a whole lot of different things you can select what background you have and select from a whole bunch of different already preloaded ones or you can add a user image it sounds really good i'm really impressed with it i do plan on changing out some of the door speakers and changing up some stuff but overall wow I'm really impressed with how much better it sounds. It's amazing what some extra power and some better equalization can do. That's why I started with the head unit. But be sure to like the video, be sure to subscribe and follow along because when I change out the door speakers and do more sound upgrades to this truck, you definitely don't want to miss it. Y'all leave me a comment down below, let me know what you think about today's video. And I'll catch you on the next video.